So the BJP is uh, very much trying to curry the favor of the farmers to stop striking. And uh, they said, okay, we hear you. We see what you're saying. Uh, and we'll delay the execution of these laws by 18 months, right? So nothing will happen until um, summer of 2022. So you guys have enough time to sort out what you need to sort out, you know, put put some things into savings maybe. Uh, and then you guys can look, participate in that free market and earn a lot more money. And at best, what this is, is a stopgap measure. Uh, because the farmers know, and the, and the farmers really were just like, okay, you can delay it for 18 months, but it's not really going to change anything that we're talking about here. Uh, it, you know, and then the Modi government said, well, we're willing to have further talks, but only with union representatives, only with union leaders, uh, not the people that are occupying um, uh, the Red Ford outside Delhi here where, you know, we just want to talk to the union leadership. Um, and, you know, this really depends on what kind of union we're looking at here uh, because you could have um, a union very similar to the American Teachers Federation or American Federation of Teachers, rather, uh, whose president sits on the board of the DNC and is not going to do what's best for the workers, but rather is going to do um, what is best for the Democratic Party. So again, the BJP trying to talk to union leadership, is this a legitimate union leadership where they are going to uh, you know, uh, bring the workers to the negotiating table and address the concerns as they need to be addressed and say, hey, we are not willing to budge unless these laws are repealed, unless you get rid of these laws. These laws are terrible. You need to have minimum support pricing in place. Also, you need to meet some of these other demands, uh, like providing food services for low-income communities that have been impacted hard by the pandemic, providing a monthly payment to people that uh, have lost their jobs, you know, to, to every citizen of, of India. They should get uh, some kind of uh, a monthly payment. That was something that they were talking about uh, in January. These these demands need to be met, um, and these demands went largely ignored, right? So if the unions are going to go and do that, negotiate on behalf of the working class, uh, then great. Let's get these union reps out there. But if the unions are going in to say, well, what does the party need, and how can we convince uh, you know, the members of our union to do what the party needs it to do as the AFT and the Chicago Teachers Union and the Washington Teachers Union in America do because they're connected to the DNC and the Democratic Party. So their interests lie more in the party Then no, we th this is this is a very bad idea. So it really depends on what the unions uh, are representing and uh, and and how they're willing to have that conversation. Uh Basically, what what the BJP is saying is, look, uh, we are not willing to negotiate unless uh, these the, unless you uh, get this whole notion that that the laws have to go away. We're keeping the laws. And they're basically saying, look, you have power right now, uh, and we basically want you to give up that power, uh, give up uh, any sort of leverage that you have, and then we'll talk about the power that you just gave up the leverage you gave up. We'll talk about it when you give it up. It makes absolutely no sense. It's this juxtaposed, uh, you know, spinning of wheels. And again, it's not, it's not really a, a, uh, a negotiation or a compromise that benefits the working class, but absolutely benefits the BJP and their corporate interests uh, who get everything. Meanwhile, the farmers who are currently striking and have been on strike for four months are, are getting pretty much nothing right they 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 maybe get their water turned on but there there's not even any talks of that there's not any, even any talks of like okay well if you send a union rep and we can discuss this well let's turn your water back on let's show you some good faith so that maybe you can show us some good faith in return there's none of that it's basically uh, either you do what we tell you to or you'll remain in the conditions that you are in and in order for you to be at the negotiating table you have to give up the one thing that uh that that it, you know is is holding your power in place um so uh 
uh and, and i mean the farmers are not going to go for it right they're they're not going to come out and be like oh well let's give up the the major thing that we the major point of power that we have it's just not going to uh it's just not going to happen uh they're basically saying no thanks right uh and while they're trying to show good faith the bjp comes out and they make these allegations that the strikes are really controlled by Sikh separatists, anti-nationalists, the left, uh, what else, Maoists. Uh, it's connected somehow to China, right? Uh, so they just keep going down the list of different people to blame rather than saying, do you, you know, maybe 250 million people claiming that this law is going to really negatively impact their lives have a point. Uh, they're not saying that they're basically trying to shift the blame, control the narrative, make this about something else so that they, they can persecute a different group. Again, they've lost their religious, um, persecution. Hindus and Muslims are coming together in solidarity to support the farmers. So now they have to come up with a different thing. Okay, well, maybe we'll make this uh, a nationalist rhetoric. Maybe we'll pick a, 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 an even bigger minority group that has been oppressed for years and years. Let's go with the Sikhs. Uh, or, or, or maybe it's the Maoists, right? We'll, we'll do some Red Scare type of shit. Maybe that'll get people to jump off board. Um, in fact, actually, when I covered this, When I covered this the first time, uh, back in early December, I think, just maybe like a week uh, after the strike actually happened, I talked about what was going on, the neoliberal economic policy, so on and so forth. And I posted it in this group that I am unfortunately no longer a part of. And I suspect that this is probably why I'm no longer a part of this group. Uh, and I had you know fans that would engage with me in that group. Um, but they also knew like I share my videos and streams specifically in that group. So that's where they're going to get their information from. And I completely get that. Right. Despite the, f I, I always tell people to like, you know, follow the page, follow my email. List. So, but regardless, it's not going to work for everybody. everybody. You know, there's some people that are always going to be like, okay, I know Chris posts his live streams to this group and that's where I'll find it. It's the one place I can go to find it, whatever. So I posted it to this group. And it was like this uh, BIPOC group. And immediately, uh, this guy comes in and he, uh, he, he starts saying that this is all fake news. This isn't actually happening. Uh, this, that, and the third. A and then he pulls up some, I think it was like a Guardian article from, uh, from a while back. It, it had nothing to do with what I was talking about. And basically used that as a way to wrongfully say that I was, uh, I was Russian propaganda. Right. So, so he red scared me, uh, in, in a, in a sense, uh, which, you know, the, some of the, some of the members of the group, like liked my video. And I basically said, Hey, uh, how do you figure this is propaganda? I have legitimate sources, uh, that I show you and that I quote in the, in the thing. Um, and he didn't really respond. People liked it. But then all of a sudden, I'm no longer a part of that group. Right. I'm no longer allowed to post in that group. No explanation. No, nothing. Just gone. Uh, so I'm assuming that some people, you know, some members uh, that run that particular Facebook group thought that I was Russian propaganda, that talking about a strike in any way, shape or form is uh, is is. Oh, it's it's scary. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, it's fake news. Oh, these are just. Farmer strikes that have been co-opted by Sikh separatists, farmer strikes that have been co-opted by uh, communists or uh, or Maoists or 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 or, or you know pro-China agents or or whatever, right? And they throw that out there. Uh, they can't really prove it. Um, uh, you know, they I, I even when I come out and I'm like, hey, I'm an independent comedian, uh, so, you know, and I talk about issues that I feel like are important to talk about in our society. Uh, I hope that you will, you know um have a conversation with me and when they don't it becomes very clear but it's no different than what the indian government is doing it's no different than what the united states government does right oh uh you're talking about the democratic party and the corruption within the within the party so you must be a russian plant you must be a russian bot you're probably one of the guys that uh you know farmed all those memes to to get trump elected or or some bullshit like that and there's no proof of it 
uh, and you know, and that's that's the sort of shit that happens. Now, Modi is also pro- proposing um, a bunch of anti-worker laws, but he's he's framing it in a way where no, 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 this is worker friendly. Um, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna use compassionate capitalism or whatever bullshit they want to throw out there. Uh, these these laws will basically um, strip a lot of power from the workers and from the unions themselves. Uh, and uh, they will make sure that uh, people can no longer strike, that unions can't advocate for strikes, uh, that a union won't support strikes. And we've seen this before in the United States, and that's the Taft-Hartley Act. The Taft-Hartley Act basically said the same thing, that you know the unions can't really back strikes, and if they do, they have to go through this very um, taxing process uh, and it depowered the unions, it depowered the working class and allowed for neoliberal economic policies to be put into place in America. And workers have seen uh, stagnant wages. You know, that's where it ended up. What he wants to do is expand contract work. This means that it'll allow companies like Lyft and Uber Uh, I think in India, there's a company called Zomato that's kind of like Grubhub in India. Uh, Companies like this who who do subcontract their workers um, and uh, and they want those to be propped up. And again, what's the um, you know, what's the benefit of a corporation doing that? Well, now, you know, their pay scale seems a little different it's it's not exactly as profitable for the worker as it possibly could be they are paid uh per ride or per order and they're paid this percentage of it and they get to keep their tips but tipping isn't really necessary uh you know and uh their mileage is calculated only from this distance to this distance they get to put a lot of rules in place they don't have to pay for your health insurance they don't have to um you know cover any damages to your vehicle unless it was done by some kind of customer or something they don't have to provide any help for maintenance or any of that sort of stuff um i work for um i've i've done lift before uh and you know uh, anytime i would have to go to the shop um they wouldn't really reimburse me or take care of anything like that. When I worked for Instacart, the only time they calculate your mileage and pay you for it and reimburse you for your mileage is when it's between the grocery store to the customer's place. So, you know, if that's a mile and a half, then you get 60 cents for that mile and a half. Following that, you know, if you have to travel four miles to get to the next grocery store, well, you don't get paid for that at all. So this is the sort of stuff that uh, that Modi wants to do. And again, we saw something like this in America, uh, in California. I think it was Prop 22 is what it was called. And it basically uh, it, it stopped these contract workers from being employees of the country or being employees of the company. Um, so now, you know, the the bill was saying hey uh i don't know if the bill was saying that but but the but what they were advocating for was you know lyft and uber and grubhub would have to pay an hourly wage of some kind um to help workers out to help essential workers out as it were uh but again that didn't happen the you know lyft and Uber put a lot of money to get Prop 22 passed, which means that workers continue to stay contracted uh, and, you know, they don't have as many rights as one would think. So now the Modi government is looking to uh, join the United States uh, along with Japan and Australia to reform what they call the quad. Right. And Biden wants to increase militarized action on china uh because why not right that that'll that'll go well how do i do how do i be harsher on china than trump was oh i know i'll actively start try to start a new war with them you know instead of economic sanctions instead of uh a a trade war or whatever i'll i'll just use militarized actions 
and I'll use the uh, uh, some some countries in the Indochina region and some countries in the uh, in the Pacific area, and I'll make al allegiances with them, uh, and I'll be able to push this through. Now, the Quad originally formed in 2004 as a uh, as as a um, um, coalition for relief uh, during a tsunami. So that, you know, it just doesn't depend on one country. I was like, okay, this is kind of like a humanitarian effort. That seems cool. That's what we should do. We should all come together to help people that are in uh, in some kind of trouble. Well, it reformed in in 2017. Uh, but talks of this is, were, were, were coming for, for quite some time. But really, does I mean, doesn't this kind of sound like a comic book origin, right? Like, oh, man, in 2004, these four countries came together to stop a tsunami and provide relief for its people. And then they disbanded and went about doing their own things. But then a bigger threat showed up in 2017 and they came back together. The quad, the return. Comic books are supposed to emulate life. Life shouldn't be emulating a fucking comic book. <laughs> like that's what this very much sounds like is the, you know, it's like the justice league of neoliberalism. But the the quad initially was reinstated, uh, or or talks of it was, of of it coming back around was under Bush, who was taking a lot of shit for not being as harsh on China uh, as as predecessors were, and uh, the right wing Japanese president Shinzo Abe basically said, "I want to ramp up, you know, aggression on China," uh, and Bush gave in right so so talks of starting up the this the quad again was uh was brought up now there were people against this coalition or whatever the the team up as it were uh it's like prime minister of australia at the time kevin rudd who then was ousted out of office um and wikileaks revealed how there was some some debauchery and chicanery behind the scenes to get him ousted from office uh, specifically because he uh, was not pro quad, and basically where this lands is, India is now going to give naval and air force support to the United States for their military aggression towards China. Um, you know, again, this is going to kind of be used as a leverage point to try to get the BJP. Uh, elected again because the way they're going to spin this is is similar to the way that America spins this, which is oh well, China's taking all our jobs and they're a threat to our economy, they're a threat to American capitalism. They're going to spin this the same way. The the, the threat to uh, Indian capitalism right now is this strike. This strike can really bring down a lot of neoliberal laws um and kind of be a daisy chain to 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 strip neoliberalism of its power and and focus on more worker uh pro worker laws and and really empower the working class within india it might shatter some caste system it's it's already shattering religious barriers so this is a threat to this this uh, the, to to indian capitalism which thrives on this level of divide so India is going to try to use that as to say, see, China's a threat. And if you want the farmers to do better, if you want everybody to do better, then we need to be in support uh, of America to, to take down China. So they're basically donating, not donating, but they're going to be allied with the United States. And the United States can utilize the Indian Navy and the Indian Air Force the way that it seems fit. And it really does seem like we're ramping up to a point where uh, Biden might engage in a in a so-called hot war, you know, in a firefight with China. Uh, and I'm not an expert on on what's going on in China. I know there are some human rights issues uh, in that country, but America has human rights issues. I mean, India's got human rights issues. What's going on with the strike is an example of India's human rights uh, issues, right? You you cut off toilets, you cut off electricity. You're you're not giving these people food or water, right? In in America, you're using chemical weapons against uh, protesters that are, are are saying, "Hey, people of color shouldn't be murdered by the police," uh, and then the police shouldn't just get away with that murder. And 
you're gassing these people. Uh, you have prisoners that are not being fed properly, right? Yesterday we talked about how um, how how prisoners were, were were fed dog food by a corporation, and the corporation got a slap on the wrist. These are all human rights violations. So for for America or India or Australia or Japan to talk about human rights violations in one country and then use that as a point to gain not just political favor, but also use that as a way to increase military aggression towards that country. It's hypocritical and incredibly dangerous. It's incredibly dangerous. Uh, and that's sort of the direction that we're going with here. So this, and, and that's just something to keep an eye out for in the, in the coming months. Um, again, you know, you're, you're going to hear a lot of liberals making a lot of excuses for Biden's aggression uh, for neoliberal aggression and for the neoliberal use of militarized aggression towards countries and economic war against countries. Uh, and when that economic war fails, they'll they'll use this hyper militarized aggression towards those countries because that's that's just what, how how the U.S. empire works. Uh, and it uses pawns like Australia, Japan and India or any other country to to, you know, push their agendas forward. Uh, on a global scale, so this is this is something that I think everybody should be uh, on, on on alert for, on watch for, and not just that, but amplify the strikes going on in India and amplify any sort of anti-war movement and anti-war uh, commentator and creator, uh, because again, it looks like we're ramping things up to now. It's like we're moving out of the the Middle East and now we're going into the Far East and we're going to try to start a war there. We're going to start a war with China because oh man, uh, aren't aren't they mean and and don't don't they have a a different economy than we do and even though they're still fucking capitalists in and of itself. So, uh I'm going to take a look at your comments. Holly says don't give up leverage. Agreed. Yeah, I don't think the farmers have any uh, intention on giving up their leverage, which is good uh, because we would not want them to do that. Uh, <laughs> she also says, oh, am I a China bot? Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what the insinuation is. It's, I'm either a China bot or a Russian bot is what people uh, claim me to be, especially in that group. It was very disheartening. Uh, I had some people that I was engaging with pretty pretty regularly. They were frequent viewers of of my videos or my streams. Um, so you know it sucks that again uh, the the red baiting uh, on a global level is so strong. We're going to like this global McCarthyist era, um, you know, and uh, and people should be concerned. People should be against this sort of thing. People should be fighting back against this sort of. Uh, propaganda, this sort of uh, red scare McCarthyist bullshit. It wasn't fun when you they did it in the 50s, and it sure shit ain't fun now. Uh, Holly says this is concerning, and sadly, India will be a proxy. I think so. Yeah, I, I, it is extremely concerning, and I think that's exactly what they're planning on 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 doing with India. It's always that's always part of the thing is like there's there's such a strong manufacturing. Um, and and development uh, opportunities in India that uh, a lot of leaders will curry favor and then try to use India as a way to uh, push their agendas. That's really what they end up doing. Um, so this is super concerning and and very very uh, very dangerous as well. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual 
comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.